because many of you as my listeners asked me about one of Pastor Mike Hoggard's most recent radio interviews where he discusses his stance on flat earth as issue, I wanted to take a few moments to address what he covered in that particular broadcast. However, before doing so, I want to first relate my total and utmost respect for Pastor Mike and the work that he has and continues to do on behalf of the kingdom. I know that he personally does not agree with much of my work and opinion in relation to certain biblical topics, but my hope is that in addressing what he says in that program that perhaps this discussion will lead others to introspection which enables them to understanding which affirms and reflects an honest investigation and more informed opinion. And so I watched Pastor Mike's Flat Earth rant all the way through this particular broadcast. And I would like to now address some of the particulars, starting first with the circle of the earth referenced in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22. The passage says, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. The scriptures assert that the earth was set on pillars, was incised from and on the waters of the deep, and established embedded upon the waters below. To give you some examples, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill, to set them among princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. From Job chapter 9, verse 6, Which shaketh the earth out of her place, and the pillars thereof tremble. From Proverbs chapter 8, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth when there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, was I brought forth, while as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. All right. In order to set the foundation for this discussion, I believe it is important to investigate the meaning of this particular passage, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22, utilizing keyword insight from the Strong's Concordance to elaborate upon the context of the chapter as a whole. In looking at the individual portions of verse 22, one must keep in mind that the words sitteth, inhabitants, and dwell are all English translations of the same Hebrew word yeshab. When applying and inserting the keywords from the concordance into each of the components of the Isaiah 40 verse 22, the meaning of this scripture is unveiled as 
It is He, the Most High, that dwells, remains, abides, sits down, sets, remains, stays, has as abode the firmament which encloses as circle, circuit, compass, the land, country, field, territory, district, ground, and wilderness, which as place of residence for the inhabitants which were placed, made to dwell, abide, inhabit, settle, sit, remain, continue, endure, and tarry upon the earth like grasshoppers, locusts, that stretched, spread, extended, rested, caused to yield the abode of stars, lofty sky, heavens, visible universe, abode of God as veil, curtain, stretched and spread out as home, tabernacle, tent, and place of residence for all the inhabitants which were placed, made to dwell, abide, inhabit, settle, sit, remain, continue, endure, and tarry upon it. Before moving on to other portions of this chapter, I think it is important to first establish that when one seeks to find a word in the original Hebrew which could apply to the description of the earth as a globe, planet, or sphere, the closest one can come to such a term for such shape is the key word ball. There are no other terms that can convey the idea of the earth as being a planet, a globe, or a sphere in the Hebrew lexicon. Terms or passages which cite the earth as being globular or spheroid in shape simply do not exist. As a plural, the word planets can be found once in Scripture as reference to the signs of the zodiac, found in 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 5. And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the host of heaven. Planets is the word Mazala, Mazala, and it means constellations or signs of the zodiac. Within scripture, the planets are associated to the constellations which comprise the 12 houses of the individual signs of the zodiac. The earth is never alluded to in scripture as a planet. In ancient times, planets, which meaning wandering star, are specifically allusions to the seven stars which did not come forth at their appointed times. These planets are specified in the book of Enoch as being rebellious stars and counted as part of the host which comprise the heavenly luminaries created on day four. Genesis confirms the earth was established and created before either the firmament or heavenly luminaries, especially that of the sun, who most believe the earth as planet is orbiting around a planetary system. The earth being created on day one is cited as foundation for the firmament which was affixed to and spread above it on day two. The sun, moon, and the stars as heavenly luminaries were placed into and hold circuit within the firmament which was fitted to the earth. According to the order of creation, the heliocentric worldview just does not in any way make any sense For why would the Most High create the earth first and then the sun on day four if the earth is somehow supposed to be orbiting around it? 
According to the ancient Hebrew belief system, the earth was and is understood as the foundational circular plane for the heavens, which Isaiah 40 verse 22 cites as being spread out as curtain above it, and which containing all of the constellations, planets, and other heavenly luminaries are housed within it. The closest that one can get to describing the earth as a planet, globe, or sphere in Hebrew is with the word ball, which incidentally is found only once within Scripture in Isaiah 18 chapters prior to his description of the earth as a circle with the heavens spread out as curtain above. Isaiah chapter 22 verse 18 says, He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shalt thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. When one looks up the word ball in the Strong's Concordance, it is listed as the Hebrew word dure, D-U-R-E, or D-U-W-R, which, though similarly referenced as circle, is also defined as ball, pile, turn, and roundabout. These terms are found within the scripture three times, once as ball, once as roundabout, and once as burn. When you look up the word circle in the Strong's, the definitions of the Hebrew word is chug, which also meaning circle is further listed as circuit or compass. And so if Isaiah wanted to describe the earth as a spherical globe-like planet, he could and would have done so with the word ball, which he used just 18 chapters prior to his description of the earth as a flat circular plane. The fact that he did not, compounded by the fact that there does not exist within the scriptures, a description of the earth as a planet, in my mind, verifies the assertion that what Isaiah was truly implying in verse 22, chapter 40, is that the earth and the heavens which are spread out above it comprise together the world in the shape of a tabernacle or a tent. When one studies the context of this chapter as a whole, such allusion fits exactly with the biblical narrative, as well as the vision of Enoch as described in the book on the courses of the heavenly luminaries, which I detail in my latest book. I think it is also important to notice that the circle of the earth with the heavens spread above comprising together the shape, form of a tabernacle or tent is absolutely what Isaiah meant in this description, especially if one considers the circle of the earth as the floor of this tabernacle or tent and the heavens which are spread out above it as the curtained walls and roof. The vision of the circle of the earth referenced in verse 22 also aligns perfectly in context with the creation account as found in Genesis. It is also peculiar to note that Isaiah also references in verse 20 that the earth was established as fixed, stationary, and immovable foundation for the heavens later established as firmament. According to these other passages, Chronicles 16 verse 30 Psalms 93, verse 1, Psalms 96, verse 10, Psalms 104, verse 5, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 20, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18, the earth indeed does not move. For instance, he that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot he seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Verse 20. Verse 21. 
Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundation of the earth? Isaiah verse 22, chapter 40. And so Isaiah is referencing the creation account in Genesis. And he's also telling you that the earth as foundation was created as fixed, stationary, and immovable. What if all we thought we knew of truth was sequestered upon lies, carefully manufactured science, and craftily complicated algorithms meant undecipherable? Comfortable in deceit and the convenience of routine, most reject truth even when confronted by it. People do not like being told that they have been bamboozled, especially by those systems or peoples they have invested trust within. Few will latch on to anything that challenges or contradicts foundational belief, choosing to cling to false illusion so long as either it is majority opinion or someone they admire perpetuates lie. Fewer are even willing to embrace change, and having no real concern for truth will not put forth the least bit of effort to its discovery. Most have tendency to lash out immediately against anything or anyone that challenges what they think they already know. Many disregard truth as meaningless until it affects them directly, and even then it is a monumental task to change mindset to embrace new perspective. The seeker of lost paradise may seem a fool to those who have never sought the other worlds. This is Secrets Revealed with your host, Zen Garcia. Visit www.fallenangels.tv You're listening to Truth Frequency Radio.